Welcome to CompSide 201. Unfortunately, Duke was supposed to record the first day of lecture and they didn't. So I'm going to do a very short version of the lecture just to give you an idea of what CompSide 201 is all about. I'm going to first go over the course web pages. Uh, on the main web page, we have a course description, a few goals, and some announcements including the dates of the exams. So make sure you know when the exams are and the final exam. The exams are February 14th and April 3rd, and the final exam is April 30th. So you need to be here that day. Uh, we have several tabs. If you click on the About tab, that's essentially the course syllabus. I've got my office hours there. We have Kate's office hours there, our grad TA's office hours, uh, Tan and Carol. We have four wonderful head UTAs, Bellany, Megan, Charles, and Daniel. And we have lots of undergraduate TAs. We have the lecture meets in Griffith Theater. You can see that. Lots of topics that we're planning on covering this semester. There's the list of discussion sections. Everyone should be in a discussion section. Those meet on Mondays. And then there's lots of other things that you need to read about. Uh, there's a book, Zybooks. If you don't know Java, you should be doing all the chapter work in Zybooks. There's information about how we're doing the grading. There's information about the WOTOs. We'll be doing working together exercises or WOTOs in class and so on. APTs. All right, so you should read that page. Then there's a dates tab, which is where I'll put up information about the lectures. There'll be reading from the Zybooks book. I'll put up the links to the WOTOs, so you can click on them there. I'll put up lecture notes, and then after the lecture, I'll put up the full lecture notes, which will have some of the slides that weren't in the original list of lecture notes. I'll also put on the furthest column over when assignments are due. We'll have long assignments, such as P0 person, and we'll have shorter APT assignments where you're just writing one method. Then there's a link for discussion sections, and you'll see there that there'll be links for the pre-discussion that you have to do before you go to discussion, and then there'll be links for the actual discussion section. The Assign tab will have links for the assignment. The APTs tabs will have, first of all, it will have the APTs you can link Click on the submitting uh, here to go do an APT. There will be also links to the reflect form, which is you have to fill out one reflect form for every APT. You tell us information about how long it took you to do the APT and other information. So after you do an APT, always go and fill out the reflect form immediately so you don't forget. If you have problems running an APT, there's lots of tips, things that other people have already done. You can see that. If you're actually running the APT, you click here. And then this is the page where you actually submit the APTs. You can also check, click here to check your submissions. Always do that to make sure that your submissions went through. We have a few more tabs. We have a tab on help. Here has different ways you can get help. There are wonderful UTAs. We'll have consulting hours in the evening, uh, BioSci 130, Sunday through Thursday nights, except on holidays. Uh, you can come visit me in my office or the grad TAs in their office. And you can also post questions on Piazza. You should read Piazza anyway, because there's lots of questions that we answer, and you'll probably learn from those. We also post who will be in the evening consulting hours. That schedule is subject to change. And if you want to know what the undergrad teaching assistants look like, you can click here. And we have a page of, there's Kate and our grad TAs again, our head UTAs. And then we have 
pictures of almost all of our undergrad TAs. We will get the rest of them up soon. There's also a page for forms. This is if you need a regrade, you can fill out the regrade reform quest. It hasn't been set up yet. And if you have accommodations, you can fill out that form to let us know that you have accommodations in addition to sending your letter to uh, Kate and myself. We may have other forms here later in the semester. Resources tab is going to have links to old exams. So you can see all the old exams. There are a lot of old exams. Uh, as you can see, we've been teaching this class for at least 25 years since I've been here. Uh, some of the later exams are going to be in C++, but the last 10 years or so, or actually 16 years it looks like, are all in Java. So lots of old exams you can look at. There are also some other links here uh, for getting set up for this class. There's a link for getting your IntelliJ environment set up. There's a link for if you need to install Java or if you want to use JShell, which is the cool shell I've been using to type uh, Java little short expressions so that I don't have to write a whole program to test something. We also have some troubleshooting document. If you'd like the Java visualizer, uh, you can get that there. And a couple other documents. So feel free to look at those. They might help you getting set up. The rest of the stuff on the page is just extra. I also have a link to Piazza and a link to Sakai. Now, if you're adding the class late, you will probably have to add yourself to Piazza. There's an announcement in Sakai on how to do that. Let me go to the lecture notes now. There we go. Now, I don't like you sitting in the last four rows because we're going to be working together this semester. So please come closer and sit, not in the last four rows, but anywhere else is fine. Here's the uh, link to the course webpage that I just went out over. Almost everything will be on that page. We will also use Sakai, but mostly just for your grades. Please respect others. Unplug from electronics. Uh, you can use your laptop and phone when we're doing WOTOs or if you need to take notes, but please do not use it to watch soccer games or do shopping for like shoe wallets here. Please don't do that. Respect your peers. Every day will be a different letter. The first day is A, so we'll be talking about algorithms in this course. Uh, data structures and algorithms in particular and how they intertwine. We'll also be using APIs. They will help you in solving a problem that's essentially library code. Somebody else wrote this code and that will help you in solving problems faster because you can use some code that other people's wrote and then you can put that together with your code. The plan for the day is just to talk about what CompSci 201 is about and hope you determine if this is the right course for you. The prereqs are essentially, did you take a beginner programming course? Have you learned about arrays and, or they might be called list, and done a lot of problem solving with those? That's a big part of it. Uh, we'll also be talking about uh, what work is expected in this class. You will be able to read Java programs and analyze them in taking this class. Uh, we especially are interested in knowing about our programs running efficiently or not. So what you should know is what work you should be doing to complete before January 13th, 15th, 16th, which is actually already past due when I'm recording this lecture. All right, what is computer science? So Carl Sagan, he's an astrophysicist. Uh, what does he say? He says, our species needs and deserves a citizenry with minds wide awake and a basic understanding of how the world works. Now, he was talking about the universe, but really now the universe also includes the internet or the World Wide Web. And what we're going to be talking also about is how computer science helps in the whole world aspect. We're going to be talking about algorithms and data structures. You'll see things like these. 
This picture here is a graphic picture of quicksort. This used to be the quickest sort, but it no longer is. Uh, we'll be spending less time on sorts and focusing more um, on using APIs to help us. For example, you can just press a button now and sort, so we don't need to spend so much time on sorts, but there's a lot of good algorithms in sorting. Um, this picture here is a hash table. And hash tables are pretty much a miracle. Things you can search for something like instantly and find it. They're just so cool. We are going to learn how those work. Here's the course staff. I've already gone over that. There are 26 UTAs in a, uh, to help with this course. Four of them are head UTAs. Here's a little bit about me. So I like to swim. This is me swimming in a race in St. Croix. Uh, one mile uh, swim in the ocean, which was very beautiful. I was just doing it for fun. Uh, this is one of the many fish tanks in my uh, house. We have, I think, 14 fish tanks, though that could change any day. It could be 15. This is a cake. I like to make cakes. This is a Pokemon cake. Sorry, Pokemon cake uh, called Magikarp. I also like to make cookies. This is a two foot high cookie of Super Mario. And I've also made Obama cookies for my son when he when it was his birthday one year. This is when Obama first took office. Anyway, you should find a way to keep how do you keep your sanity, a hobby or exercise so that you don't just work, but you'll work a lot in this class, but also have something else to do. Uh, what is computer science? So this was a WOTO. I'm not going to skip that. Uh, these things are all computer science. And they're not just computer science. They're computer science at scale. These are huge programs that a lot of people help to develop. Millions of lines of code to do big things, searching uh, lots and lots and lots of data. So we'll be talking a lot about this. For example, we have self-driving cars. How do you do that? You have to put cameras uh, on the top of the car or somewhere in the car that's looking forward. It's taking a lot of pictures. It's trying to figure out where the lines are because the car has to stay in, within the lines. But there's all kinds of problems. You could have leaves on the road or snow on the road. And then it's hard for the car to know where the lanes are. There's all kinds of very cool algorithms. And things have to happen very fast. So they have to be very efficient algorithms in order to have a self-driving car. What is computer science? So Tony Hoare is a very famous computer scientist. He is actually a Turing Award winner, which is kind of like the Nobel Prize in computer science, because there is no Nobel Prize in computer science. So the highest award you can get is the Turing Award. He says, what is it that distinguishes it from the separate subjects with which it is related? What is the linking thread which gathers these disparate branches into a single discipline? My answer to these questions is simple. It is the art of programming a computer. It is the art of designing efficient and elegant methods of getting a computer to solve problems, theoretical or practical, small or large, simple or complex. Now, he is also the person who invented quicksort. What is computer science? So we're going to be looking at lots of different things. Like, for example, you may have done long division when you were back in elementary school, but you did it with just small numbers. We're going to be looking at doing long division with very large numbers, so you have to use a computer. So all the problems we're going to be looking at, like updating search in engine, these are things that computer scientists need computers to solve. You can't do them by hand. So we're really interested in very large problems. Now some goals for CompSci 201. Essentially, you'll be giving problem statements, and you'll want to figure out. And we may also give you real data to use with that. And you'll want to design a solution, develop that solution, debug it, and then you're going to test it and get it to work, hopefully. You'll be using libraries to help you solve it. 
We want those programs to be efficient. You have to decide which data structures to use. Are you going to use an array? Do you want to use a map, a linked list, stacks, queues? These are some of the things we'll be learning about in this class. And part of the process will be deciding which data structure to use when you need, when you need to solve a problem. We'll be evaluating the time and space complexity of algorithms, especially algorithms at scale. And we'll be applying basic object-oriented design and programming principles. So Java is an object-oriented language, so we'll be learning all about that. Who are you? Now, I'm just going to, I can take pictures of everyone in the class, and I could do very cool things using algorithms that other people wrote with those pictures. I could put your pictures in a circle. I could picture, put your pictures in words. Those are all people. Isn't that cool? Or I could use your pictures to create a photo mosaic of somebody else. Those are all algorithms that somebody else wrote, and they're very cool algorithms. Now, we did a survey for the class. So just to let you know who's in the class, we have 66% of you are first years. And then 25% of you are sophomores. And then the rest of you are juniors and a few seniors and a few extra people in the class. What have you studied? So it looks like about half of you took CompSci 101 at Duke. And then some of you, a small sliver of you took CompSci 116, which was a smaller intro class in Python. Some of you took Engineering 103. So it looks like at least three quarters of you have had Python as a beginner programming course. Now, a good part of you, 12% of you, took APCSA in high school. So you should already know Java. The first two or three weeks for you will be a little bit of a review. And then there's lots of other possibilities. How comfortable are you with Java? It looks like half of you have never read or written any Java. 10% have read but never written Java. And then, so more than half of you have never used Java. So keep that in mind. Some people will know Java, but some people will not. Why are you taking 201? So a lot, good chunk of you are considering a computer science major or minor. How anxious are you? So one is anxious. It looks good. So nobody is too anxious, or just very, very few of you. So hopefully you've calmed down. Uh, we will also talk about different people in the class, uh, famous computer scientists or somehow related to technology or computer science. Latanya Sweeney is a computer scientist, and she did a very cool thing. She figured out that people had databases out there. They didn't have a lot of information about, of, about people in general, but they might have had a few uh, key information about people, such as their date of birth or their zip code, their address. And what she figured out is she could get databases from like two or three sources and put them together. And then she could use that information to identify people about 87% of the time. She said, you can identify someone if you just have their date of birth, their zip code, and their gender. And she actually has a program online you can you can go and uh, enter in your date of birth, zip code, and gender, and it will tell you. It may come back and say, oh, there's only two people with that same date of birth, gender, and zip code. Or it may just say there's only one person, so they've identified you. That's a bit scary. So she's one of the reasons why they started HIPAA, because there was too much data out there, and you could identify people based on the, di the different sets of data out there that you could combine. Very cool. All right, so then I did go uh, show a, a Java program. I'm not going to do that today, but that code is out there if you'd like it. Here's the actual Java program. Uh, we will be talking about lots of code. So what does this program do? I'll just go over that. In this program, we're creating, we have a data file. It's called kjv10.txt, which is the King James Bible, a very large book. And it's in a folder called data. 
And what we're doing is we are using file, a class file, to create, um, to basically take that data, we create a file variable, and we take that file variable and we create a scanner variable with that file variable. What a scanner is, is it lets us read the data in a stream. So we just can easily get one word at a time from that book with our scanner. Our scanner variable is called s. Next thing we've done is we've created a hash set, a new hash set, but we haven't put anything in it. So its name is set, and we say new to get a new hash set. You may not know what a set is, that's fine. You may not know what a scanner is, that's fine too. We then create a variable w count and set it to zero. We're set, then we set a timer. And then we have a while loop, and we say while s dot has next. So s is our scanner has next tells us whether or not there is another piece of data in our stream of data. And as long as we have data, we're going to add one, so we're counting the number of words. We're going to get the next word, so s.next actually gives us the next word. We counted it, and then we got it, so now it's in the variable word, which is a string variable. And then we have a question. We said, if set.contains word, so if it's in our our, our hash set, or sorry, if it's not in our hash set, that, uh, then we're going to add it to our set. Uh, and so we're going to do that for every word. We're going to grab it. We're going to count it. We're going to see if it's in our set or not. And if it's not in there, we're going to put it in there. And then we're going to stop our timer, and we're going to print out the total number of words and the total number of unique words. So the total number of words is in the variable w count, and set that size. We only put unique words in there, so that is going to so if we we can call dot size and it will tell us how many words we put in set, and that will be the number of unique words. And then we can print our time and how long that took. So I'm not going to do that today. Uh, but I do want to talk about Java variables and types. So you saw in that code, there's lots of different variables I created in there. Java has diff two different types of variables you can create. The first are primitives, which are very simple, like integer, double. You create an integer, you put an integer in there. W count was, a was an integer. Start and end were of type double. They were keeping track of the time. Also in Java, you can create an object. We had several objects we looked at. String, which was uh, the variable s. S sorry, string uh, was word. Scanner, which was the variable s. And hash set, which was the variable set. So these are objects that we'll be learning about how to create objects, how to manipulate objects, all kinds of cool things that you can do with objects. They're much more powerful than primitives. Uh, so I'm not going to skip this slide here. Um, so how are you going to learn? Again, there's a lot of stuff if you don't know Java. You're going to have to read the book, Zybooks. It will catch you up to speed on Java. You should be able to read it pretty quickly because you already know how to do looping structures. You should already know how to do ask questions like if statements. So it's just how do I do those in Java? So I think you'll find the book very helpful this, these first two or three weeks read a lot in the Xi books, and get up to speed on Java. Here are some of the Java types and operations. So uh, what can you do with an int and double? You can add them. You can subtract them. These are some of the operators. What can you do with a hash set? That's an object. So we write methods to apply to that object. For example, we can add an item into the hash set. We can ask if an item is in the hash set using contains. We can find out the size of the hash set. These are methods somebody else wrote that we can just use and apply to them. What can we do with a scanner? We can ask, has next? Is there an, that just says true or false. Is there another item in our stream of data that's coming in? Next will actually get us that item. Close, we can close the scanner. All kinds of methods we can do with the object scanner. So we're going to be talking about classes and objects in Java. When you have an object, you can invoke a method. You always use dot. 
So you have the name of the object, and then you use dot, and then you have a method that's being applied to that object. For example, set is an object, dot, add is a method we're applying to set. We're adding an element to the set. We'll also have some naming conventions. So identifiers begin with a lowercase. Class identifiers begin with an uppercase. Then you've got lots of statements. They always end in semicolons, except statement blocks. They're going to have curly braces. We're going to skip the WOTO. We're concerned with understanding Java at scale. Uh, let's see. So Java is an object-oriented language. We will be talking more about the classes and objects later. We've talked about different types, primitive types they have. We haven't talked much about arrays, but we'll be getting to those. Arrays are when you have a group of objects that are the same type of object. Uh, and they'll also learn the difference between an array and an array list, which actually is an object. One of the things we'll be concerned with in this class is analyzing code. So, for example, what file of a million strings will result in this code executing most quickly? We have some code. We have a million strings. How, what, what is our data going to look like that would make it execute like really fast? Like, for example, what if all the data was the same letter, the letter A? We had a million strings that were A. Versus what if we have our data that is like all different words and they're all really long words? That could affect the difference of our running program. We'll be looking at trade-offs. What is the bottleneck in the algorithm? What is the part that's taking so hard? Now, when I ran that code in class, I commented out the part of putting it into a set. And we saw that, that wasn't, there wasn't much difference between me reading words and putting them in a set versus just reading words and counting them. And so that means the set operations were really fast. That wasn't the bottleneck. The bottleneck of that code was reading all the words from the file. That's what took the longest amount of time. All right, course logistics, I've already gone over the web pages. So a lot of this is just the uh, more information about the web pages. I've already done that. Again, read the web pages. If you're going to succeed in CompSite 201, which we hope you will, please come to class every day and participate. The WOTOs do count for part of your grade. When you fill out a WOTO, only one person in a group of, say, like two to four people will need to fill it out. You put all the net IDs for that group, so only one of you fills it out. When you're working on assignments, be sure to start early so you have time to get help. Uh, and notice there are late penalties, but the initial late penalties are not very harsh. It's OK to be a day late or so. But try, always try, to get your projects done on the date they're due. You have one day grace period. But note, assignments are due on Thursday, and we don't really have office hours on Friday. So you do get an extra day, but it's going to be hard to get help. So better to get it done on time. We hope that you'll all be as successful as Curious George is. Curious George is very curious about things, and having curiosity is a good way to have success. Anyway, I hope you enjoy the class.